Ah, here we go. So I started out a long time ago getting used to C. Uh, we didn't have containers, but we had something very familiar. Um, we had something, we didn't have string, but we had something like a vector of care, a vector of care with a monotonic sequential allocator uh, and an iterator for them. But we called them malloc arrays and pointers. <laughs> and uh, pointer operations were awesome. I mean, if you look at the original source for Unix, they were amazingly concise. Uh, but they were amazing and horrifying. I mean, this little equation right here has two different pieces of state being modified on the left and one on the right. <laughs> you had to really pay attention to what's going on. So I was running a ray tracer, and I had something that was essentially a vector of vector polygons, but it was you know, malloc and pointers to pointers. And I went through and counted how many polygons ended up in each cell of my grid. I allocated all the cells, and then I had to fill them in. So the code did a whole bunch of three-dimensional math, scan converting the polygon, and at the end it needed to fill the polygon pointers into this data structure. So using all my Jedi, po Jedi powers and everything I learned about pointers, I wrote that. <laughs> Three paces of state being modified on just the left-hand side. <laughs> Crashed GCC at the time. <laughs> So they say there's supposed to be two audiences for your code. Well, neither of them could read this. Yeah, that was my, uh, that was my first education. Uh, I moved on to inheritance in C++. I was writing a proxy for instant messaging, and I had a server and a client, and I was in the middle there. And messages would come from the server, and I would catch them and parse them and pass them on, and messages would come from the client. You see a little symmetry here. So I wrote a class socket. Everyone has to write one of those back in the 90s. And a message processor that handled the particular protocol of the mes of messaging system. And it had a socket. And I made one for the server side and one for the client side. And then what do you need to do? You need to hook them together. <laughs> it works. <laughs> but I don't recommend it. <laughs> I was also needed to parse regular expressions. And what's the best place to get Perl regular expressions? Well, we'll get them from Perl. We'll call them from C++. <laughs> and, you know, C++ is great for managing resources, thanks to DRES, or you might know it as RAII. Um, there's a lot of ceremony. So we'll use a code generator, and we can write that in Perl, and then we'll make a special, we'll show how smart we are by writing a special make file rule. And so I had this make file that took CPPP files and turned them into CPP, right in the same directory as the original CPP files. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was really cooking. <laughs> now we get the templates. It can only get better, right? <laughs> um, you know, STL, this is back in the days of Visual Studio 6. Uh, you didn't really use STL still, so you wrote your own list class. Usually it was intrusive, so you could use the curious recurring template pattern. Um, and in, in sort of the 98 style that you saw from STL, even though you couldn't use it, this didn't look anything like I was used to when using pointers in C. This, this, I would not call this concise. What I wanted was something like I would do when I used pointers, except that you know, now you're making copies, and you know, post increments is just broken in C++. Um, you know, maybe if the language had gone a different way, we could declare a reference, but you can't assign references, and you still can't post increment. So I thought about this, and I thought about this, and I thought outside the box, and then I thought way outside the box. And then I thought, like, Alice in Wonderland style. And I just created my own definition of, of what pre-increment meant, and created this entire alternate reality where you could beautifully describe what you wanted to do as long as you didn't know what pre-increment meant. <laughs> Don't be Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> so engineering, we learn from our mistakes, and we learn from the mistakes of others. I encourage you to look at your own code as you progress in your career. Try to find times when you made a choice that didn't work, and see if you can learn from them as well. Thank you.